this journey of womanhood, we get faced with situations that we never planned for. For example, um, being pregnant right after you've just had a baby. Well, in my situation, I had two children within two years. It was a really, really tough situation because I couldn't find any resources here on YouTube that could encourage me to make me feel any better of my situation. So I want to do this video to encourage any woman that finds herself in this situation. Just know that God has got you. Don't feel bad. Don't think about what people are going to say because at the end of the day, you are the one who's going to take care of the baby you're going to bring into this world. Hello and welcome back to my pregnancy and birth vlog. How are you all doing? I hope you're all doing great. It's my pregnancy and birth vlog. Now this footage was from last two years when I had my last born Adele. So if this is something you'd like to watch more of, don't forget to click the subscription button turn on notifications so that each time i upload a video you'll be the first to know how do you turn on notifications just click on the bell icon and you see there's two brackets on top of the bell and the the color of the subscription button changes to gray and that means you have finally joined the sandy sandy team so now that you've subscribed let's dive right into the video so as most of you already know, I've got three kids, okay? So um, I've got a boy first and then my middle born. I gave birth to my middle born in, um, Mar no, in February 2018. And after I had him, it was a good spacing between the first and the second. Now this third born, oh my goodness. So my boy, which is my middle born, was only seven months and I was still breastfeeding fully. So I was able to do pregnancy prevention with the first one, doing breastfeeding. But this one, I don't know, grew. Huh. I don't know what happened. I just don't know what happened. I don't even know what prompted me to do a pregnancy test because I was just getting I was always tired I was sleeping too much like broad daylight 12 o'clock when I'm supposed to be busy doing something I'll be sleeping I was like no this is not normal so I just took the leftovers of the pregnancy test that I have got and then I tested and guess what it was positive breastfeeding my baby is only seven months and i was pregnant again oh my god it was so devastating like i was so confused i felt really ashamed i must tell you i felt really ashamed because i had literally just gone back to work i had literally just gone back to work and this happened now i have to find the courage to go and speak to my boss about it and I was so scared, I didn't know what she was going to say because I had just literally come back from maternity leave and I was pregnant again. Oh my goodness. So I had to gather the courage to speak to my boss about it. Okay, so it was positive. As no, so many people didn't know about the pregnancy because like I said, I felt really ashamed. I didn't tell so many people. Like after I had the baby, so many people were like, oh, do you have a third born? Like, even till now, some people do not know that I have a third child. Like, it was that bad. I just stayed indoors, enjoyed my pregnancy. I went to work till about six months, big six months into the pregnancy. And my little boy stopped breastfeeding like two months into the pregnancy because I guess the taste of the breast milk changed and he just cut himself off breast milk. So I stopped breastfeeding and then I carried on with my pregnancy. It was a very, very tough one because my blood pressure kept going up and down, up and down, up and down. And then the worst part is when I did my sugar test, I had pregnancy induced diabetes. So it was a really tough one. I had to go on a very, very strict diet because of my BMI. And I must say it was really tough. I was on a strict diet. I was going to see the dietitian 
almost every trimester I had to go and see the dietitian to check my diet to make sure that I was on track just so that my sugar level doesn't spike up and affect the baby in an adverse way so I was battling this and that and what even made everything worse I developed something called hypoglossal nerve palsy now this condition what it does you completely lose control of your tongue yes it was that bad like god has been really faithful what i've been through in this pregnancy um the hypertension wasn't that bad but i had the diabetes pregnancy induced which i no longer have now by the grace of almighty god um i had hypoglossal nerve palsy so they had to do all the tests i did ct scan i did all the scans you can name it the worst one of it was the MRI. mri scan oh my god i will never forget that day in my life like i didn't know i was claustrophobic till that day when i was supposed to be in that machine for good 15 minutes like that was the longest 15 minutes of my entire life i just couldn't stand it i'm going to insert a picture of what the machine looks like if you're inside that machine it feels like you are in some you you are in a coffin so i'm just going to speak about my birth story and then i would insert the footages of when i was actually giving birth to the baby so i did that mri scan i did a ct scan i did all the scans just name it it just wasn't working they couldn't they said there was nothing wrong with any of my nerves there was nothing wrong so apparently doctor said maybe baby is sitting on a certain nerve in my body that has affected my tongue so what it does to you you're not able to control your tongue when you're eating you can't even push food down your throat it was that bad like that pregnancy was tough it was tough it was unplanned <laughs> and i don't even know how i put through it guys it was that bad so um towards about eight months the i was put on steroids and i was having severe migraines as well so in this country when when someone is pregnant the highest you know the highest painkiller you're given is paracetamol but i was on codeine yes I was on codeine because the amount of pain I was in was uncontrollable and I was put on codeine and even the codeine wasn't working. So one pregnancy, I was having sugar issues, hypoclosal nerve palsy, and I was having severe migraines. Like, it was bad. So at my 37th scan appointment, after they had scanned baby, everything is fine. Baby was at, his, at her normal weight. I went to see the specialist doctor and she said to me that the way things are going, they need to induce me like tomorrow. I was like, what? So the appointment was <laughs> the appointment was on a Thursday and they said I need to come in tomorrow to be induced. I was like, oh my God. Mind you, all my kids are natural, but I, I never went into labor naturally. I was induced in all my pregnancies. All three I was induced. And According to the doctors, they say induction is the... I've never done the natural way, so I don't know. But the induction is so painful because the contractions are like man-made. It's not natural. And, oh, God. I don't even want to remember. It is that bad. Like, I was literally slapping my thighs. When I finished, I had marks all over me. Like, it was literally that bad. I'm going to insert videos of the footages that I have so that you guys will see how it actually happened and everything with my pregnancy face and my swollen nose and my acne. Oh God, it was terrible. Like, this video is long, long, long overdue, but as you all know, I was not on YouTube then. I have just started my channel and it's something I've really been looking forward to share with you guys and I'm really, 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 you know, excited to share with you guys today so it was finally the day i was meant to be induced thank god i had made some soup and put in the freezer already so i went in the next day i was meant to come in at about 6 p.m to be induced so when i went 
nurse checked me and I was already 3cm dilated. So she said, well, if I'm 3cm dilated, I really don't need to be induced. All they need to do is to take me to the labor ward and break my waters, you know. And once they break the waters, um, labor is going to kick in by itself. So that's what the midwife said. I was like, okay. Because with my first boy, they used a the gel. And then with my second boy as well, they used the gel. But with Adele, they just broke my waters and that kicked in um that kicked in my labor. So um while while I was you know while I was in the labor ward and I was dilated and by the time I got to the labor ward I was already five centimeters dilated. So the doctor came in and they broke my waters. Now the main problem I had with Adele maybe was because I don't know for some reason they weren't able to use their belly belt to check her heartbeat so they had to do it internally so you can imagine this baby won't come out and they had to put something that they, they had to attach something to her head to check her heartbeat through the head so this is what happened and they monitored her they weren't able to do it through her. At this point, labor kicked in very quickly and Adele was already here. I don't know what I would have done without this gas and air. I was in so much pain even after baby had come out. Because at this point, I was trying to deliver the placenta and it was so painful. This gas and air was a lifesaver. Oh my goodness. So yeah, this is it. After a long battle, hubby videoed me while I was sleeping. I was so tired, I was so cold. I just, you know, snuggled myself in the duvet and I was, you know, I was fast asleep. I was gone. <laughs> and that's baby really wanting milk, but mom was asleep. <laughs> enjoyed my vlog and you want to see more of these just comment below and if you can relate to anything that has happened during your birth and things like that comment below let's interact don't forget to join the sandy sandy family by clicking the subscription button and clicking your notification so that each time i upload a video you'll be the first to know until next time i see you guys again bye